in this lecture let's discuss flat mirrors so especially focus on we'll focus on the specular and diffuse reflection and we'll try to apply the law of reflection to how mirrors work and we'll try to describe the nature of images that are formed by flat mirrors now so what is reflection so reflection is basically the change in the direction of an electromagnetic wave at a given surface that causes it to move away from the surface so the texture of a surface affects how it reflects light so remember this part that the texture is important because the texture decides what type of light will fall on it for example so let's say if you have a general surface let's say if you are really flat surface so the reflection that's caused on a really flat surface is called specular reflection it's called specular reflection but the reflection that's formed on a ragged surface for example if you have a you know ragged surface the reflection that occurs here on this surface is called diffuse reflection the name itself says that the reflection is being diffused so how does the reflection occur so reflection contains of two main incidence an angle of incidence and the angle of reflection so what is the angle of incidence and what is the angle of reflection so let's take a simple example So let's take the example of this specular reflection. So let's say you have a normal in the center. So a normal here, so this line is called as a normal. So normal is basically perpendicular to the surface. So there is a 90 degree angle between the surface and the normal. Now let's consider a uh, uh, light ray that comes towards the center so let's consider a light ray that's gonna hit the center of that particular wave so consider this is the light ray so this is the light ray this light ray the angle between the light ray and the normal is called as the angle of incidence so this theta i is called as the angle of incidence so the light that is entering is called as the incident ray so this ray is called as the incident ray so when an incident ray you know comes onto a surface that ray then gets reflected that reflection that reflection so this ray is called as the reflected ray and this angle is called the angle of reflection so theta r is called as the angle of reflection so for a specular so for the general law of reflection is that so what is the law state so the law of reflection states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection so it doesn't matter which type of surface it is so it occurs for both surfaces so both specular and diffuse but the angle of reflection is theta i equal to theta r where theta i is the angle of incidence and theta r is the angle of reflection now when you look at the reflected ray and the incident ray remember that the angle is supposed to be to the normal not the surface so it's the angle to the normal now so we talked about the reflection of light how does a flat mirror work then so flat mirrors generally form what we call virtual images so what is a virtual image so the image that is formed by rays that appear to come from 
the image point behind the mirror but never really do is called as the virtual image so here the light is not actually going toward to the image but it looks as if the light is actually going to the image so this type of images are called virtual images so in general a virtual image can never be displayed on a physical surface so you can never show a virtual image on a surface so that is the idea behind the virtual image so let's take a simple understanding of how a mirror works so let's say that we have a mirror so this is a mirror surface let me say that let's say that i have you know some object on here so let's say this is the object that's on here now this object what it does is it has to undergo some sort of a reflection so because this is a mirror what happens now is that we are going to consider that there is a light ray that's originating at the top and hitting the mirror and when it hits the mirror remember that there is a normal to the surface so that normal gets reflected back again so this here is the this here is the angle of incidence and this here is the angle of reflection so the light ray goes this way and comes out this way but originally the light ray in general when you look at the actual light ray when you take the actual image straight through let's say if it's going in a straight line so let's say if this is going in a straight line so because it's hitting at a 90 degree angle the light ray actually comes back to the same point where it came through and passes the actual image point from where it started but for it to form an image where will it form an image so remember that there is a reflected ray the reflected ray is this ray let's say that if it did not reflect and it went through clearly into the mirror and let's say this is the reflected ray this reflected ray also went back into the mirror now the intersection point is formed here so to make sure that we don't dif we differentiate between the type of uh, mirrors that we have so what we do is we draw it as a dotted line so we draw it as a dotted line so this point across the same surface creates the image so this here is the image and this here is the object notice that the actual light rays did not actually go to that but the light rays that are there will eventually form a image so this is the idea behind a general understanding of how reflection works that is the reason why it's a virtual image notice that the light rays are not actually passing through the mirror but it looks as if it's passing through the mirror so that's the reason why we call this a virtual image so that's the reason why we call this a virtual image now so this is the topic of flat mirrors so there is not much else so the idea behind here is that it always tries to form an image how did the bottom part come in so the bottom part if you take a general light ray the light ray that hits here will come go back again so go backwards and if you extend this light ray you end up getting this point here so that point becomes the uh, intersection point for the mirror now let's use the concept that we did now to understand how it works on curved mirrors so if you do not have a general mirror let's say if you had a curved mirror what happens when you have a curved mirror so there are two types of uh, curved mirrors one is a concave spherical mirrors so there are two types of mirrors let me write it this way there are two types of mirrors concave and convex mirrors physically in terms of the geometry we can classify the mirrors into two types spherical mirrors and parabolic mirrors 
so which means that if you take a spherical mirror spherical mirror will have two types a concave and a convex the same way a parabolic mirror will also have two types it will have a concave and a convex so you'll have a parabolic concave and a parabolic convex in the same way you'll have concave spherical and convex spherical so using that idea let's talk a concave spherical mirror a concave spherical mirror is basically a mirror whose reflecting surface is the segment of the inside of the sphere so what happens here for example let's say that we consider a sphere so i'm not going to draw a 3d diagram i'm not going to be able to draw a 3d diagram so imagine this is a sphere so in that we cut a section of the sphere out so and we are using this surface the inner internal surface so this surface as the mirror surface this here is called as a concave spherical mirror this here is called as a concave spherical mirror now we talked about concave spherical mirror what would be a convex spherical mirror if you take another sphere and cut it off again so if you cut it off again and the mirror surface if the mirror surface is on the outside then this is called as a convex spherical mirror so this is called as a convex spherical mirror so these are the two types of spherical mirrors convex spherical mirror and concave spherical mirror so in simple definition in concave the mirror surface is on the inside mirror surface is the inside of the curvature in a convex the mirror surface is the outside of the curvature provided that we consider that in a mirror surface so this here is the inner surface this here is the outer surface so remember the idea behind the convex and concave mirrors so how would the image form in a concave spherical mirror so let's take the idea so now let's try and draw so this here is called as the principal axis so the principal axis is the line that passes through the center of curvature what is the center of curvature so i already told you that the mirrors are generally cut from a sphere so the sphere's center is called as the center of curvature and this length from the center to the mirror so this distance is called as r or the radius of curvature so r is called as the a radius of curvature and obviously c we already told so it's called the center of curvature the exact half length in the middle between the center of curvature and the mirror is called f f here is called as the focal point so f here is called as the focal point so this point so the this is how we generally call it the uh, the nomenclature of the mirror now let's try and use this principle to try and understand how the image forms
so this is the center of curvature and the exact half length between this is the so c and f so this distance from f to the point is called as the focal length right so from focus right until here so this particular distance is called as the focal length so it's denoted by f now let's try and understand this in simple sense let's say i have an object that i am placing right at some point like here let's say that this is the uh, Im object that i am placing so we'll we'll call the object o how would you form the image if you remember that when you hit the when you hit the mirror it generally should reflect on that plane but what is the parallel to this plane so the path the perpendicular to the plane all of the perpendiculars pass through the center of curvature so remember that that is the perpendicular here so every line will pass through the center of curvature so any straight line here now will pass through the center of curvature so now it passed through the center of curvature what we do next here so what we'll do here next is we'll try to pass the same line again through the center right so through the center and now when it passes through the center so let's try and draw the actual image that you can get from a curved mirror now so consider a light ray that passes parallel to the plane so it passes straight through now it has to reflect so remember that i told you that it reflects at the same angle equal to that but across a perpendicular to the line so the perpendicular is the line that passes through the center of curvature so which means that it has to pass through some other point that point here is the focal point so that point here is the focal point so what happens here is this line passes through the focal point so it passes through the focal point so the light ray came like this and then reflected through the focal point how would you draw the next line so draw a line then passing directly through the focal point so So you have a line that passes directly through the focal point and then remember that when it went straight it reflected through the focal point now we have drawn already a line passing through the focal point so when it actually passes it actually passes as a straight line so it passes as a straight line so that intersection point So that intersection point here represents the image. Now if you draw according to scale, you will get a much more clear image. So you can try it as a general you know, introduction to the chapter. You can try it as you know, a, a small assignment. So you can try how to draw this image again. I'm going to draw one, one more again. So draw a straight line. So draw a circle. So draw a circle and note down the center of curvature with that noted down so basically uh, take out half of the entire circle right, and draw a line parallel to that passes passing through the center of curvature so draw a line that passes through the center of curvature so once you have the line that passes through the center of curvature now take the exact half distance between the center of curvature so that becomes the focal point f and the center of curvature becomes c now let's consider an object let's say i have an object somewhere right here so this is the object so the first line to draw is draw a straight line and hit the mirror 
once you hit the mirror draw a line then passing through the focal point so once you draw the line straight and draw the the arrow goes this way next draw a line passing through the focus so from the top of the image draw a line that passes through the focal point so draw through the focal point and then draw a parallel line to the plane so this is the plane so this is the pl uh, plane axis so draw a line parallel to this so now draw a line parallel to this so the intersection point is the image so this is how you can draw the image image that passes through a curved mirror so this is the image formation from a concave spherical mirror so this is the image that you can form from a concave spherical mirror now let's look at each of these and try to understand how that works now the height of the object is denoted by h and the height of the image is denoted by h dash so h and then put a line on it it's called h prime or h dash whichever you want to call it now the distance from the mirror to the object so the distance from the mirror to the object is called p so this is the distance between image and the mirror the other one that we want to know is this this distance this is q q is the distance between the e sorry this is the distance between the object and the mirror this is the distance between the image and the mirror now this distance is called f so where f represents the focal length and this distance until c this distance is called r r is the radius of curvature so the idea here is to remember is that f is r by 2 so the focal length is half of the radius of curvature now with that in let's come to the mirror equation so mirror equation is an equation that relates the object distance image distance and the focal length so the formula is 1 by p is equal to 1 by p plus 1 by q equal to 1 by f so this is the formula for calculating the relationship between distance between the image and the object and the focal length now you can also use the other factor which is called the magnification factor so the magnification factor is given by h dash by h that is equal to the negative of the image distance by the object distance so both these two are the common formulas that we use in mirrors or in generally in most of the optics for optics part so the magnification magnification factor is how much larger has the image become or how diminished has the image become if m if the modulus of m is greater than 1 then we can say that it's a enlarged image if the modulus of m is less than 1 then it's a diminished image remember that modulus represents the absolute value so without the sign so take the negative sign out whatever the value of m left is the modulus of m now so the ray diagrams you can use ray diagrams for checking the values and calculate the from the mirror and the magnification equations for the concave mirrors so concave mirrors can produce both real and virtual images so it's a 
mirror that can produce both real and virtual images now let's take a simple problem so we have a concave spherical mirror that has a focal length of 10 centimeters and they're asking you to locate the image of a pencil that is placed upright 30 centimeters from the mirror so they're asking you to find the magnification of the image and the ray diagram to confirm your answer now what you can do here is i'm going to draw the analytical version now you try to draw the ray diagram to confirm the answer now so let me let me try and solve the problem so this is the problem that we have so the value that is given is so they have given us the focal length so focal length is 10 centimeters so we know that r becomes 2f so which is 20 centimeters so this is the radius of the circle that you're going to draw on the paper now the next one they have given is the image of the pencil so the image distance is q is 30 centimeters from the mirror so they have given us f r and q so f f and q so they're asking you to find the magnification of the image so they have asked me to find the magnification of the image so to find the magnification of the image we need either h dash by h or we can use minus q by p in this we know q but we do not know p so let's find p so we do not know p value so we know the mirror for mirror equation 1 by p plus 1 by q is equal to 1 by f so 1 by p here we do not know plus 1 by q here is 30 centimeters plus 1 by f f here is 10 centimeters you don't need to use you don't need to convert the units into uh, si units if all of them are the same so if you use the same units throughout the entire equation you don't need to convert the units so from this if you exchange the 1 by 30 value to that side 1 by p becomes 1 by 10 minus 1 by 30 so 1 by p becomes 30 minus 10 by 30 300 sorry so 30 minus 10 by 300 so now you get 20 by 300 so that becomes 2 by 30 that becomes 1 by 15 remember that this value is 1 by p so we have 1 by p is equal to 1 by 15 so p becomes 15 centimeters so p is 15 centimeters so the image distance the object distance is 15 centimeters now with that in let's try and find the magnification factor so we know that the magnification factor is minus q by p so minus q here is given which is 30 centimeters so minus 30 by p here is 15 centimeters so 15 so 2 negative 2 so m here is negative 2 and modulus of m is greater than 1 so we know that this is an enlarged image this is an enlarged image so you can try and draw the ray diagram so you can try and draw the ray diagram and find out if this is the correct answer now so i have given out the solution so you can try it and check whether your answer is correct or not so let's come to the second type of mirror convex spherical mirror so a convex spherical mirror is basically a mirror whose reflecting surface is outward curved segment of the sphere. So here light rays will diverge upon reflection to form a convex mirror and they generally always form a virtual image. So how does that work? So let's take the same idea here. So if you remember concave mirrors we talked about the surface being on the inner side. So here the surface is on the outer side. So here, so the, this is the outer surface is the actual reflecting side. Now, if this is the reflecting side, how will it form an image or how to write down the length and everything else. Now let's try and understand how it actually creates the virtual image. So think of an example, say for example, that we have here this is the object 
so this is the object so from the object we know that there is going to be a light ray that's coming come directly onto the mirror now when it hits the mirror remember that there are two points here so one is the center of curvature so one is the center of curvature one is the center of curvature and the other is the focal length so what to do now to reflect it so the actual perpendicular to that line is the line that passes through the center of the center of curvature so this is the line it passes through the center of curvature right so now this line that passes through the center of curvature it becomes the perpendicular then which will be line that reflects it remember that here the reflection is on the outer surface so the actual ray will reflect based on the focal length so it basically reflects like this so it comes like this and it reflects like this now if it did not reflect it would have gone somewhere somewhat here and this is the first one that we're going to look at so what we're going to do now is we're going to extend that line backward so we're going to extend that line back so the next thing we want to do is remember that the next one is the line that passes directly through the focus now for it to directly pass through the focus so imagine a line that passes directly through the focus so this is the line that's passing directly through the focus but it cannot enter the mirror so what will it do now it will reflect as a straight line so remember that when it draws through uh, it goes away now here it goes straight right so it goes straight so it goes as a parallel line so when it comes down it goes as a parallel line now if you extend this line backward the intersection point is the image so notice the small intersection here so this small intersection is the image so let me highlight it so this is the image that forms now let's look at this image in terms of uh, the concepts of reflection if you remember that this reflection is not actually forming on the same side of the mirror it's forming on the other side of the mirror so that's why this image here is a virtual image one common factor to differentiate a virtual image and a real image is real images are generally upright the real images are generally inverted and virtual images are generally and uh, upright so if they are on the same direction as that of the object then so if you if they look above see so the object is looking up the image is also looking up so which means this is a upright image so this is a virtual image and most common virtual images are generally so virtual images found by mirrors especially a convex so a convex spherical mirror always forms a virtual upright and a diminished image so it always forms a virtual upright and a diminished image so this is the idea behind a convex spherical mirror now when we consider the distance notice that before the distance was on the other side so this becomes p now this becomes q notice that when we took the axis if we consider this as the zero point we considered everything on the left to be p and q now what happens here here we'll have to consider that the mirror is actually the p value is negative so the p value should be considered negative in the formula so this is the idea behind the topic of the mirrors when we talked about when we talk about the common concept of convex spherical mirrors so let's try an example so we have an upright pencil that's placed in front of a convex spherical mirror so it has a focal length of 8 cm and an erect image of 2.50 cm tall that is formed 
4.44 centimeters behind the mirror so they are asking you to find the position the magnification and the height of the pencil now let's try and decode the data that they have given first so the first thing that we have given is focal length so focal length is 8 centimeters next they have given the height of the image which is 2.50 centimeters and next they have given you the distance of the image from the mirror so the q value is 4.44 centimeters so they are asking you to find the position so which means they are asking you for p value they are asking you for magnification they are asking you for the height of the object so now let's use this data so we have this data now so let's use this data and decode the answer so you don't need to take p negative every single time because the problem itself will lead a negative value why is that let's take the problem and see so the mirror formula is 1 by p plus 1 by q equal to 1 by f now when we have 1 by p plus 1 by q so we don't know p so 1 by p plus 1 by q becomes 4.44 is equal to 1 by f is 8 so 1 by p becomes 1 by 8 minus 1 point 1 by 4.44 so now if you take the value it becomes 8 times 4.44 and the value above is 4.44 minus 8 so 1 by p becomes so 1 by p becomes 1 by negative 0 0.10 so when you take the p value it becomes negative 10 centimeters so this is the value of p so the first value is done so p value is gone now we have p and q and we can calculate m so m we know is minus q by p so it's minus 4.44 divided by minus 10 so that gives you a value of so minus minus gone so we end up getting an m value So the m value here is 0 0.444 so that uh, becomes centimeter is so 0 0.444 that's the value because it's unitless now we want to find the height of the actual erect image but we have to for we have give they have given us h dash so they asked us to find h now we know m so we know that the formula of m is not actually q by p we can also use another formula which is h dash by h so the height of the image by the height of the object so from this if you write m is 0 0.444 that is equal to the height of the object is so the height of the image is 2.5 centimeters 2.50 centimeters and the height of the object is 4 plus though that becomes h so if you want to find h now so h becomes 2.50 centimeters by 0 0.444 so if you calculate the value so if you calculate the value it becomes 5.63 centimeters so this is the height of the object so 5.63 centimeters so we have entire values p is 10 centimeters minus 10 centimeters and h h dash sorry h here is 5.63 centimeters and the magnification factor is 0 0.444 so this is the answer next let's talk about the final type of mirrors why do we need a parabolic mirror the problem with spherical mirrors is that when you look at a spherical mirror the actual curvature is so small because in general mirrors are not really small mirrors are really large so meaning that a mirror would be of this size and you would generally cut a small piece from that mirror so you would cut generally a small piece from that mirror 
to the point where that the actual center of curvature is so far that it causes a specific phenomenon called spherical aberrations. So what happens in spherical aberrations is that the light that comes straight will not actually go through the center of curvature. So will actually, sorry, will not go through the focal. So will not go through the focal point. If you consider this as the focal point. So the light that comes through will not actually go through the focal point but always miss the focal point in one way or the other. So every time it comes through the light will actually have problems with connecting. So notice that the light rays are not intersecting correctly. This phenomenon is called as spherical aberration. So this happens due to the environmental factors that can change the effect of uh, the focal point causing it to because it's too far there can be small changes that can affect the way the focal point adjusts itself so to stop this from happening what we do here is we use parabolic mirrors so what is the advantage of a parabolic mirror over a general general mirror in a parabolic mirror this is how in general a parabolic mirror will look like let me draw it much more clearly. So this is what a parabolic mirror looks like. What is the advantage of a parabolic mirror is that in a parabolic mirror the focus is actually inside the curvature. So meaning that it actually resides from the surface inside of the curvature. Because this resides so close there cannot be any aberrations that can be caused. That is the reason why Parabolic mirrors are generally used in many cases because they can actually have an interference at the focal point easily. Now, so this is the main advantage of parabolic mirrors. That's the reason why most parabolic mirrors are used in uh, solar cooking. They are also used for uh, refractive telescopes. So they can be used for refractive telescopes.